how to survive when you cannot get out of a toxic relationship, when you are still involved with a narcissist or other toxic person in your life. I'm Lise Colucci, and I am here to help you understand and heal from everything related to toxic relationships. If you can't leave and you're just entangled in it and you are just in reaction to and always going back and forth and and really deeply in these relationships. It's time to start seeing the relationship for what it is. It's time to see the toxic person for who they are and see yourself for who you are and recognize you think very differently, that you are two people who relate very differently. Let's talk about some of the things you can do. Be aware of the denial. Be aware of the denial in you and be aware of what you, where you are making excuses or you are covering up for, or you are slipping into cognitive dissonance. Pay attention. There may not be a whole lot you can do with it once you're in cognitive dissonance other than recognize it. You can write that down though. You can see for yourself where the logic and the emotions aren't ma matching. You can see for yourself where there is a denial mechanism in you that is not seeing this as as bad as it is. Just last week, I had someone tell me after leaving something terribly toxic and terribly abusive to the point where if I told you the story, y'all be crying, right? They said, oh my gosh, I'm just now seeing a little bit of how bad it was. When I was in it, it didn't feel as bad as this. It was like I, I was numb. So see, start seeing the denial. The thing about being in a toxic relationship with someone where, where they are very toxic to you if you're not ready to get out, it's going to get really uncomfortable until you are ready. The only way to be ready is to make it more uncomfortable than staying in it, right? So these are the hard truths that we need to face. You can't get out because of other reasons, like you legitimately and wholeheartedly cannot leave for whatever reason. Then recognizing these things isn't to make you more uncomfortable. It's to separate you from them so that you can find pieces of yourself that don't re relate back to that other person. You know what I mean? It's to help you go forward with, with your life in the direction you want to as best you can within that relationship and to keep them separate so that your gray rock isn't a struggle. It's simply to manage down their toxic behavior. Find outlets for your emotions, journaling, talking. That is one of the main reasons I have been coaching people is to give people a place to, to talk it through and to validate their experience for themselves by talking it through with someone, right? That's been there. Another thing is journaling. Another thing is creativity um, or athletics or anything, taking walks, find outlets, whatever works for you to help you allow these emotions to move through you. Understand that the accountability will not happen. Stop pushing for it. Stop trying to make them understand what they've done. They know what they've done. Stop trying to make them see the truth. There is no truth but theirs in their eyes. Stop trying to make them be accountable. If they were accountable, it would be disingenuous. A narcissistic person does not take accountability because they do not see their actions as wrong because they don't have empathy for what you're feeling in the first place. Study the behavior that they're doing, don't engage in it. You guys, if you do this too long, it can really make you numb. It can really shut you down to your own experience of joy and happiness and good things in life. It can make you stop like living life, right? In, in a positive way at all. So be careful. Understand if you're doing this because you legitimately can't leave for your own reasons forever, then You've, you're compartmentalizing and that has to be okay as long as you function outside of it in other parts of your life. If this is your whole life, be very careful. Find ways to find to make sure you understand this is only a piece of your life. But, but study the behavior. Pay attention to yourself, never to the toxic person. You think ah, they're gaslighting again. Okay, there's the projection. Oh, now they're going to do this. Okay, I know that I know this game. I know this cycle. I understand it. That's what's happening. Understand the cycle. Understand that it's never going to stay good and that they will cycle into the toxic fits and behaviors, right? Understand it. Try to recognize that it isn't to do with you. It's their cycle. Don't trust the love bombing unless you understand it's love bombing. Trust it for what it is. Let's put it that way. Basically, what I'm saying here is you have to cut off your emotional response to them. You have to react to them as if you don't have empathy for them either. 
which is pretty sad, but it's the reality. How can you relate to someone? We have to relate on the on equal terms, right? Or else it's confusing and it doesn't make any sense. They're not going to come to your terms because they legitimately lack the empathy. If you need to, you feed the ego. Stop engaging thinking you're going to win an argument. You're not. Even if you do, you're going it's going to be met with a narcissistic temper tantrum or narcissistic breakdown that that will then not serve anything. Sometimes if you're going to stay, you got to feed the ego in order to quiet things so that you can focus elsewhere. Does that make sense? Especially if it's in a work situation. If you're in a work situation with a boss that and it means your job, sometimes that's the only way. It's sometimes the quietest, quickest way. As long as you're not doing it, thinking you're gonna, you're seeking your own self-worth from it. Reset your expectations. In fact, why even have them? Why have expectations on another person? Let them be who they are. Allow them to be who they are. And that way you're not battling these expectations that they're gonna change because guess what? Most people don't. Narcissists are never going to. Because guess what? Change is really difficult. And for a narcissist, it's pretty much impossible because they don't have the will or the desire to do anything other than what they're doing right now. Keep some bits of good of your life to yourself. Keep your joys to yourself or to your friends or share them with the trees or the plants or the animals. Don't give your good to toxic people. If you're in a relationship, let's say you have a toxic mom and your toxic mom wants to call you every other day and you get excited and you want to tell her something i just got a promotion at work and you call your mom and you're like i just got a promotion at work she's going to shoot it down she's going to either now or later use that against you well you shouldn't have been in that it's about time i mean what there was no one else up for the promotion in some way or another you're going to get shot down or they're going to use it against you so stop stop sharing the good with them unless it's something they already know about and then you can say yeah it's good tone it down because what they do is they use your good and then they will twist it they will devalue it don't share boundaries with a narcissist don't say this is my boundary i've set a boundary oh my gosh you've just drawn a line in the sand with chalk that and they've got an eraser don't do it just set the boundary set the boundary hold them to it you're not going to be able to because they're always crossing lines reset it use gray rock don't argue, don't engage, just set the boundary. It's like dealing with a petulant child. They're going to push. There is obstinance in this type of personality disorder that wants its way. So do your best, okay? And then of course, gray rock. Gray rock, be careful. It's not meant to be a lifestyle. It's meant to be a coping mechanism or a strategy in life for dealing with anything toxic. Something toxic comes my way, I don't really care if I see the person again, I'm going to gray rock it, right? I'm not going to engage with it and force them to, to understand why I'm upset about something. Just gray rock it. Just go neutral, go boring, diffuse. Think of it as diffusing, not rolling over. You're not allowing them to treat you a certain way. What you're doing is diffusing the situation so it doesn't escalate. Find a life outside the relationships, tiny things if it has to be. Even if it's in your head, even if it's in your home in tiny ways, find things outside the relationship that bring you pleasure and joy and happiness. Foster friendships. Don't rely on friends for all of this, you guys. Friends get tired. Friends can only support you. They want the best for you. And when you don't leave or when you can't leave, it's frustrating to them. It hurts them. I mean, think about how many people you would pull out of these situations if you could just so they'd have a better life, right? Your friends care about you. And a lot of times people lose friends because of these relationships because they have nowhere to process all of this. And so it all goes toward their friendships. Be, be aware that sharing is great, but too much of it might damage friendships because that friend wants you to leave. That friend wants the best for you. They don't, they don't know what to do to help you. So you find a coach or a therapist or a group coach or come here and chat on the, and whatever it is to get a lot of that out, find people who have been there. Otherwise, you know, foster these friendships. What do you two enjoy doing or three or four enjoy doing together? Get into it, do that thing. Make the part of your life that is not around the narcissist, narcissist free, have fun, enjoy yourself, 
Do something good for yourself with your friends. Don't engage in the toxic behavior. Again, gray rocking. Pay attention to your body. It's telling you all about the traumas that you're feeling. It's telling you all about the stresses and the, and the upsets, okay? Pay attention, calm it, give it some breathing, give it some relaxation, give it some exercise, pay attention to your body, feed it well, get some sleep, take care of yourself. If you don't know what to do, get out and volunteer because helping others can help you feel better. Helping others can take you outside yourself for a little bit so that you're focused on caring for others. Now, if you've got caregiver burnout, don't go that route. Volunteer in another way or take yourself somewhere else outside of the situation, right? Don't, don't push past what you're, what you're capable or, or if that's a boundary for you, don't do it. But for some people, it's really useful. And then I'm going to say the last thing, which is look for self-validation. You've been taught that you're not okay by toxic people. You are okay and you are good and you are wonderful and amazing. And you've got to find the parts of you that believe that. It takes time. Start small. Start tiny. Three things you love about yourself every day in a journal or in your head or out loud, whatever it is, find them. Find It could be a simple thing. If it's not personal, it doesn't have to be, I'm such a nice person. It can be like, oh my gosh, I really have a creative mind because when I look at the clouds, I see the different shapes and I, and I see the animals in the clouds or whatever. You can appreciate yourself. That's what it's about. Appreciate yourself. Appreciate the way you think, the way you feel, the way you react to things, your sensitivities, your kindness. Start appreciating you. Don't expect the narcissist to because nothing they do is genuine anyway. And their validation is nothing more than part of the cycle of what they do, right? Their valuation, their devaluation, their valuation, their devaluation. Step out of that cycle and take care of you within this, this relationship. Take care of you, okay? I'm Lisa Colucci. I will talk to you guys next time. If you need anything, like I said, coaching, group coaching, or anything else, check out the main description of every video. You guys take care. Thumbs up, subscribe. Bye-bye.